The American Bar Association has enjoyed a positive reputation in this country for decades, but based on its recent evaluation of Lawrence Van Dyke as unqualified for a seat on the Court of Appeals, the John Locke Foundation's Director of Legal Studies says the U.S. Senate Judiciary Committee should no longer look to the ABA for guidance on these nominations and nominees. John Guzay joins me now to talk about all this. John, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Donna. You write that Lawrence Van Dyke just got the Kavanaugh treatment. What do you mean by that? Well, much as they did with with, uh, Brett Kavanaugh, the left has decided to sink this nomination not by pointing out specific things about the candidate that might make him unqualified, but simply through a process of character assassination. It's uh, a high-tech lynching, as Clarence Thomas said when they tried to do it to him years ago. Tell us about Lawrence Van Dyke. What is his background, and uh, what was he nominated for? He was uh, President Trump nominated him to join the uh, U.S. Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit. Prior to that, he'd been... Um, Attorney General for Montana, and prior to that, I think he was an assistant attorney general in New Mexico. He had a very distinguished career. He also ended up, I think, as um, a uh, uh, prosecutor for the Department of Justice. So he has a thoroughly impressive background. He also went to Harvard Law School, where he graduated magna cum laude. He was the editor of the uh, Harvard Law Review, which is the most highly regarded law journal in the country. By any objective measure, he was clearly very well qualified for this position. When the president makes a nomination to um, a consequential seat like this, there is presumably a vetting process. Uh, People, different organizations weigh in on the nominee. And the American Bar Association has always, by my read, been considered kind of the gold standard. What does the ABA think about a person's uh, background, history, qualifications, et cetera? What did the ABA say about Lawrence Van Dyke and why? The, uh, the, the, they, they submitted a letter saying they, they had decided to rate him unqualified and uh, not for anything to do with his professional behavior in his various offices, but simply because some of the people they interviewed described him using phrases like arrogant, lazy, um, had a privileged attitude. They said these kinds of things about him. Well... Presumably, there would have been other people who said something different about him? Absolutely. After the uh, letter was published, a great many of the people, including many who were interviewed by the ABA for this appointment, came forward saying that they had given him a glowing review, and uh, they described him as hardworking, thoroughly knowledgeable, fair, uh, a pleasure to work with. So they they gave a very one-sided account of what was reported, and they didn't give any specifics. I mean, they didn't say something he'd done that was inappropriate or, or they didn't, it was, it, was just a, it was just a hit job. What kind of an impact has this unqualified rating by the ABA had on his nomination? Well, I don't think it's going to hurt his nomination at all. Um, but in fact, what, the people who were really suffered as a result of this is going to be the ABA. What this, after the letter was published, a great many member ABA members, some of them resigned, some of them came forward and said, I'm no longer going to appear at ABA functions. Um, many of them called for, well, Josh Blackman, for one, said, he's a law professor, who came forward and said that he thought that the lady who interviewed or who ran this whole uh, vetting process for Van Dyke ought to get called before the Senate committee and have to testify under oath about how she could have been so unfair. Uh, so I think the, the, the people who really lost from this is the ABA itself, and many people are now saying, myself included, that they probably shouldn't be consulted any longer about judicial nominees because they simply can't be objective or they won't be objective. Did Mr. Van Dyke respond to any of this? Hey, he was asked about some of these allegations, one in particular when he during the hearings. Um, one of the nastiest things in the letter was the way it distorted his response to a standard question. The, the letter said that he had refused to say he could be objective to members of the uh, lesbian, gay, and transsexual community. But in fact, what had happened was they'd asked him that question, will you be fair to these people? And he had responded in the way all judicial candidates respond by saying, I will be fair and objective to everybody. And um, at the hearing, he practically broke down into tears when this came up because as a Christian, he said, I think that all human beings are created in God's image and they should all be treated with respect and uh, equal dignity. So this was just a 
a disgrace, a disgraceful way to treat uh, uh, somebody who's been nominated to sit on a on a a federal bench. John, if you believe, and as you've mentioned, others apparently do as well, that the ABA is no longer able to be objective about these nominees, then to whom should the Senate Judiciary Committee turn to try to understand who a nominee is? Well, I don't actually know of any organization that would win uh, the confidence of both the left and the right on these kinds of judicial nominations. So probably the best thing is for them simply to make their do their own research, make their own inquiries, and make their own best judgment based on what they find. Personally, um, I, I have confidence in the federal society. They do a great job of evaluating potential judicial candidates, and uh, so does the president. He's relied on them throughout his term. But uh, I'm sure the left would never go along with that. So I think the Senate's just going to have to do this on their own going forward. You know, John, over the last several decades, um, as we have watched this nomination process and these public hearings, it has gotten really, really ugly, I think fair to say. Uh, what has happened to us? And it didn't used to be like this. No, it didn't. And it, it, it really started... Um, with the nomination of Robert Bork, uh, they call it Borking back then because the idea was if you can find some dirt on a candidate or say enough nasty things, his nomination will be withdrawn. Now, that worked with him and it worked with, uh, with uh, Judge Ginsburg, but it hasn't worked really very well since then. I mean, Clarence Thomas, they tried to sink him this way, and he went, he went ahead and was uh, appointed to the court. And they tried to do it most recently with Brett Kavanaugh, and that really backfired, too. The problem, I think, now is that it's just become the Democrats and the left's go-to plan. Whenever they don't like somebody or they want to stop them from speaking, they just um, they just smear them on in in the public media and hope that they'll go away. I wish that would change. It, it doesn't seem the right way for us to be ta- trying to resolve any of our disputes. Wasn't the standard? that was previously used by members of the Senate who were making these votes, really whether the person was qualified or unqualified, not really the ideology or the potential politics or evidence of politics of that person. It was really uh, based on whether they were a qualified jurist. Sure. I mean, uh, uh, previous candidates, some of whom have pretty extreme ideological views like um, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg or... um, um, Anthony Scalia, these were people who were uh, approved almost unanimously by the Senate. So this is a new phenomenon. It doesn't have to be this way. Um, In fact, recently, Ruth Bader Ginsburg was interviewed about this, and she said, and I think I'm quoting this correctly, the way it was was right, and the way it is is wrong. (laughs) So nobody likes it, but it's not clear what we can do about it. And, of course, um, the Supreme Court Justice uh, Ginsburg was uh, very good friends with the late uh, Justice Scalia, and those two people could not be any further apart in terms of their views of the Constitution, etc. Probably not. And they set an example that uh, a lot more people should be following today. We we don't have to hate each other just because we disagree about things, and we certainly shouldn't try to shut one another up uh, by using personal smears. It's just not the right way. John Guzay is the Director of Legal Studies for the John Locke Foundation. He's written a fascinating piece about this nomination of Lawrence Van Dyke, and you can find that at johnlocke.org. John, thank you. Thank you.